And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Just ask Joey. Joey. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where you will find a former idiot answering your questions to help you get through or get past your idiocy. And if we can just take a second at the beginning, if you guys could see the outtakes that I have leading up to actually getting a take that works, I seem to have the hardest time on the intros. Uh, But since I do all the editing, you will never see those. But just so you know, they will probably be extremely entertaining, but can't show them. They're not... uh, they're not PG. They're, there's lots of bad words. Uh, today's question is one that is very near and dear to my heart because it has to do with politics. I was a political science major at UC San Diego a million years ago, unfortunately. And um, I love this question, which is why I'm throwing it up here for episode five. The question is, and this is something that could be a real thing come November, is what is actually going to happen if Donald Trump becomes president. And I think this is a very big question for a lot of people because I think people are really worried. I think people are, I mean, you're either really worried or you're really excited, depending on what side, depending on who you're voting for. But like, what's really going to happen when Donald Trump becomes president? So this is my opinion. This is somebody who has studied politics, who follows politics, but I'm just a dude out in California. So it's not like I'm a, a, well, actually, you know what? All the political analysts are just some dudes and and women that really don't know what they're talking about because nobody would have predicted this a year ago anyway. So I guess I'm just like everybody else. So what do I think is going to happen if Donald Trump becomes president? Um, Let's kind of go through what he talks about and then look at like the bigger picture. So one and a big fat one, uh, there's not going to be a wall between here and Mexico. So if you're one of those rednecks, that's all excited about a big wall being built on, what is it, like 3,000, 2,500 miles of border. Uh, it's never going to happen, so let's just squash that right now. Nobody's going to build a huge wall. Nobody's going to man the entire wall. I mean, think about that. Just think about the logistics and the money that it would cost to do that. It's ridiculous. So get over the whole wall thing. It's not going to happen as much as you may want it to. If you don't like it, Don't live in Texas or Arizona. Move north. Um, Taxes aren't going to change that much. He's not going to fix the the import-export with China. None of that stuff's going to happen. He's the president. He's not negotiating contracts and stuff with people. And just because he built a building and negotiated contracts for for revamping uh, New Jersey casinos and everything, like, how does that translate to negotiating with China over trade? So that's not going to happen either. Um, middle class, you're going to continue to get smaller. And the people that, that are going to benefit from this situation are not the top 1%. It's the people in the middle class and the lower class that adjust to the new economy. The economy is what it is. It's global. It's way global now. Are, your, are some jobs going to India? Yeah. Are some jobs going to South America? Yes. So you have to adjust. And you can wish and want and pray as much as you want about those jobs coming back. But once they're gone, once they're overseas, once they're done by a computer, once they're done by a robot, they're gone. And you can either waste time by hoping and praying that they come back or you can adjust to the new economy and you can uh, be successful in it. And you can stay in the middle class. You don't have to worry about dropping down to the lower class and, and having to fight for, fight for your dollar. It's not, about, it's, it's not about you. It's about what's going on around you. And you either adjust or you die. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty cold, hard fact. But it's just the way things work. It's, the economy is never going to... It's never going to adjust, revert back to what it was before. It, it doesn't do that. Um, Obamacare. Obamacare is not going anywhere. They'll probably, once they realize that, they'll probably change the name from Obamacare to something else. So when it doesn't go anywhere, the Republicans don't have to really give credit to it. But it's not going it, to, it may adjust, but it's not going to go anywhere because insurance companies have effed people over for a very long time. Either the insurance that they had or the insurance that they don't have. 
and then they tried to get or they get some they get sick and they get kicked off. Insurance companies are are totally screwed, and that's why you needed something in place. Now, if you want to blame anybody for Obamacare, blame the insurance companies. Blame the the cost of medical care in the United States. But you can't get mad at Obamacare. He's doing it because there's millions, millions of Americans that need it. And if you're somebody who's staunchly opposed to that and you get checks for for Medi-Cal or Medicare or whatever now, you really can't complain about it anymore because you're getting subsidies from the government for your medical care. So those are my favorite people, the people that talk all this crap about the government and then get food stamps and then get Medicare, Medi-Cal, Social Security and all this stuff. Come on. It's it's it was it, it happened this way because the insurance company screwed people over and the, Obamacare is going to be here forever or some version of it. So we can stop that. Um, and I think the biggest thing that's going to happen when Trump becomes president is I think a lot of his supporters are going to be extremely disappointed because he's going to change his tune really fast when he gets in office. He's going to have to just on a global scale. You can't talk the way he talks about Russia and about China and about Mexico and about forcing people to do this and forcing people to do that because you have a big army and big this. It doesn't work like that. You can't you can't bully people in this day and age. And I know people always bring up, oh, well, Teddy Roosevelt was a bully. That was like 120 years ago. It's not the same. It's not the same world anymore. And coming into an office as big as the presidency, and that's the thing that I think that dis- disturbs me the most, is that, yeah, b- the president doesn't have like as much power as you would think that they do, but it's still, you're literally the leader of the free world. So for you to come in and talk the crap that Trump talks, and to be as brash as he is, and to say the things he does about other countries and other leaders and it, it's not gonna. It's not gonna fly. And it's oh, everybody's like, hey, oh, he's an outsider. That's what we need. We need an outsider. Well, that's cool. If he's an outsider, he comes in. But guess what? Everybody else that he has to work with is an insider. So once he gets in, if he's gonna want to work with anybody, he's gonna have to change his tune. And people love pointing out. His supporters love pointing out his compromise. Oh, well, he worked with the mafia, and he worked with this group, and he worked with that group to get stuff done. And he's a good businessman. Think about that. Think about who he has to work with to get stuff done once he gets in office. He's going to be compromising with the left side. He's going to be compromising with the Democrats. Think about that. That's the Democrats are the 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 people you wouldn't expect to work with once you get into this this area of politics. If you worked with the mafia, he's going to work with Hillary. He's going to work with Bernie. He's going to work with all the people on the on the the left side to get things done if he's going to get stuff done. Or he could stick to his the right side and get nothing done because nobody will be compromising. So I think people are going to be really disappointed in the fact that this his bravado is not going to carry over to the presidency because once you get into that office, if you don't want to just sit there with your thumb in your butt, you have to work with people. I mean, it happens to everybody. Everybody has their... Um, their campaign slogans and everything, and they get into office and you go, oh, things are going to change. Obama did it. Uh, Clinton did it. Reagan did it. It's, there's there's just certain there's certain things that you just can't carry through because you have to work with a big group of people, and it's about the collective. It's not about the, the, the single individual. Um, one thing that I think on the bigger scale, not just if Trump becomes president— um, one thing I think that Trump becoming president will show, and this is one of the most disturbing things for me personally, is that the presidency can be won by focusing on the lowest common denominator. And what I mean by that is I'm shocked at Trump's popularity and I'm shocked at Bernie's popularity. Do I think Hillary Clinton is the... the the greatest candidate ever? No, hell no, not at all. In fact, I wasn't even going to vote for her coming into this election. I honestly was going to vote for Jeb Bush. I was hoping that Bush was going to was going to go for it. And I'm not even a Republican. I'm an independent. And then when Bush was a wet noodle, I thought Kasich. Kasich would be a great guy. And that didn't work out either. So now I'm, you know, Bernie or Trump or Hillary. I mean, come on. 
Hillary is probably the most qualified presidential candidate ever. I mean, is there somebody more qualified than her? She's pretty much had every job you could possibly have in 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 power in Washington. But I, you know, there's just something about her that I, I don't I don't like. But I like it a hell of a lot more than Trump. Um, but as far as this lowest common denominator thing, you have people. You have two candidates in this with Trump and Bernie wanting to do things that will never freaking happen. And people are rallying around that. People are like, oh, free education. You really think there's going to be free education? Like, seriously. Like, it costs a freaking billion dollars to go to school for four or five years. You think that's just going to go away? Where the hell is the money going to come from? This, it's, it's a great idea. It would be amazing if it happened. I mean, it's amazing that there's free education for kindergartners through 12th graders. That's, that's amazing. You think there's really going to be free higher education? Seriously? Come on. A wall? You guys are rallying behind a wall? You're rallying behind kicking Muslims out of the country and blocking them from... I mean, do you, really, you guys really think this is going to happen? Or do you just like the way it sounds? And the fact that people can throw... These candidates can throw these things out there. And I'm sure they believe them. I have no doubt about that. I don't think they're being fake. I don't... Whatever. But the fact that candidates can throw this crazy talk out stuff that is totally unrealistic out and people are latching onto it that worries me because then the next person that comes up is just going to say just going to pull something out of their butt that people want to hear and are people going to vote for it like this could change politics forever on on like every level if you just say something hey we're going to get everybody gets free ice cream on fridays if i'm president I mean, it sounds like like these elections sound like uh, like a fifth grade presidential run. We're gonna get no homework on Thursdays, and we're gonna get free ice cream on Fridays. And everybody's yeah, oh, really vote for them. It doesn't make any sense to me, and I'm afraid that this is going to change the. It's gonna kind of change how politics are, change how people approach politics. Instead of being rational and making sense, and actually having ideas that would that will push the country forward, you just pull stuff out of your butt and talk about you know, puppies and cake and crap and everybody's going to vote for you. Like that, to me, that bothers me the most. Um, And this idea of an outsider coming into, an outsider coming in to fix things. It's like, are you going to get a tennis coach to coach a basketball team because they're a good tennis coach? They go, oh, well, if he was successful as a tennis coach, he's going to be good as a basketball coach. Like that's the kind of sense we're talking here. You know, that it's, it's like, oh, we're going to get a mechanic to, uh, we're going to get a mechanic, a car mechanic to work on the space shuttle. Like, does that make sense to anybody? That's what we're talking about here. We're taking, talking about a businessman and I'm not overly impressed with what he's done as, as a businessman. He, uh, he invested in property in maybe the richest city in the world in a time when the property values were going up because the crime rates were going down. I think anybody who invested money in that time period and who had the money to invest it, it wasn't like he earned it, made a shitload of money on on their property. Does that make them good businessmen? No. It makes them, you know, some of it's right time, right place. He's made a lot of good decisions. He's made a lot of horrible decisions. But it's not like his properties are successful no matter where they are because he's such a good businessman. Whatever the economy is, that's where his companies go. That's where his buildings go. Look at New Jersey. His buildings are empty. New Jersey's economy sucks. The um, the beachfront stuff sucks. And what happened? His stuff sucks. It's not like he's like this incredible businessman that you know is like the needle in the haystack thing. To me, what he's done is not oh, it's not overly impressive. Mark Cuban, on the other hand, VP for Hillary, that's a dude I could rally behind. That's a dude that could. That could really change things um, as far as just a visionary idea because he's forward thinking. Trump does real estate. Trump, is that really forward thinking? What is there? Build a place where the economy is going up. Really? Oh, really? No kidding. That's what everybody should do. Um, when it comes down to it, if you're looking at this presidency and you're really worried about what the presidency is going to mean for your life, I think you're not taking enough ownership on your life because really a president shouldn't affect you that much. It doesn't really matter where your station is in life because there's so much freedom right now. There's so much, 
your access to information is is incredible. I mean, like, just look at this right now. You're sitting here listening to me, watching me. I'm just some some former idiot from California saying stuff online, but and you're watching it. So if I can do this, if I can pull myself out of out of whatever situations I was in, you can pull yourself out of whatever situations you're in. You can't depend on the president to do anything because really the president's not going to do anything. Just because somebody's president, just because somebody gets elected, it still comes down to you. You have to make decisions. You have to pull yourself through. You have to push yourself through. So if you're sitting there worrying about the presidency, thinking you're going to have to move to Canada if Trump's president, or you're going to move to Canada if Hillary's president, or you're going to, I mean, come on. Really evaluate what you're doing, what you're doing from day to day. If you're spending a whole bunch of time watching politics and getting scared about the, the, the climate of the United States, stop watching the news, stop, stop focusing on the negative stuff, and see what you can do to change your life, change your family's life. Don't worry about the presidency. So when it comes down to it, Trump as president, Bernie as president, Hillary as president, it's really not going to change. And all these big lofty goals, all these big lofty promises, they're not going to happen. And that's okay. They don't need to happen because you need to worry about what you're doing. You need to worry about your life and your family. And once, you've, once you get past that and once you realize that, that nobody can impact your life the way you can impact your life, things just get better. So if you have any questions, politics, sports, health, relationships, I would love to hear them. You can hit me up on Snapchat. You can hit me up on Twitter, and I can't wait to get your questions. See you next time. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Just let's go. Just let's go. Just let's go.